And now it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker this morning. He is not only handsome, as he likes to say, but he's also debonair and charming. Friends, he says he's all hugged out, but he still has one more hug to get on this podium this morning. So help me welcome our very own, our beloved, Reverend John Scott. Well, you will soon know about hugging. I'm just saying. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Good morning, Reverend. It's a joy to be, to be here with you this morning. Welcome, 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 and welcome to those who uh, join us on the World Wide Web. Those of us that were on retreat last Sunday uh, started bawling before you all because our service was at 7.30, so there. But I hear you had a wonderful service here in Kingston, and my, one of my favorite songbirds had everybody on their feet, and we just know that the consciousness between us in Ocherez and you all here was, was, it was palpable, you could feel it. It was wonderful. Let us sparkle ourselves, because the work that we're doing as a spiritual community is really spreading far and wide. My encouragement today is titled, if then I be single. I was listening to the late Dr. Wayne Dyer on YouTube talking about the power of the words, I am. And he quoted this statement by the master teacher, Jesus, if then I be single. And I thought, hmm, that would be an interesting topic to explore with my Temple of Light family one Sunday. And so I filed it away on my uh, kind of, my mental filing cabinet for future talks. And then on Tuesday uh, evening at our spiritual enrichment service, practitioner Vance Gardner also quoted this passage from Matthew 6, verses 22 and 23. So I thought, you know what? I better talk about it. It's obviously in my mind. Um, so I want to just share the passage with you. It reads, and I quote, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore then I be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if then I be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee is darkness, how great is the darkness, unquote. The gift of eyesight is in my view one of the great miracles of life. If you think about your optical structure with its intricate retinal system, the rods and cones, the adjustable lens designed specifically to allow the perception of, of the colors and shapes of the world around us, it is truly miraculous and amazing. And then you come to this teaching known as the science of mind and spirit and begin to learn about the working of the mind. And perhaps you come to realize that true sight is insight, what I choose to call I, capital I, sight. If I asked everyone here this morning to use your cell phones or cameras or whatever and to take a picture of our beautiful meditation garden here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in Kingston, to take a picture which reflects for you the essence of the name of our garden, which is tranquility, the result would be, I'm sure, dozens of different photos with significant di uh, differences in detail. Someone may have taken a shot from the entrance into the garden, showing the pathway meandering up to the wedding gazebo. <laughs> or another may have captured the gazebo itself, covered with tendrils of brilliant white thunbergia blossoms. Someone else may have captured the koi darting in and out of the shallows of, in the pond. And someone else may focus on a single orchid or the yin and yang paving stones that mark the spot where we have our poetry, prose, and music in the garden every other month. And remember that this one, the last one for this year is on November 29th. So the point is, each of you would be viewing the garden with eyes that are physically more or less the same structurally basically, but each of you would bring to the assignment of creating the picture your unique consciousness, your unique view of this beautiful spot. You would all have seen the same garden, but each of you would view it through a different frame of reference. 
a different consciousness. And by the way, this is not your assignment, but if you feel moved to do so, please take pictures of our beautiful grounds and send them to me here at Temple of Light uh, at cwjamaica.com for possible use as the background for the thought of the day with the inspirational uh, affirmations that go out every day to people on our mailing list. And if you want to receive those and you're not receiving them, please give me your email in the vestibule um, after the service this morning. But back to how we see things. Take someone who is unhappy, for example. I don't see anybody like that here. But such a person tends to see things that justify their unhappiness. The pessimist always sees discouraging signs, while the optimist is likely to look at the same circumstances and see the possibilities in them. It has been said that we see things not as they are, but as we are. Jesus says, if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness, unquote. Now, as science of mind students, we know that evil is not a thing of itself. It's not a power. And no matter what anyone tries to tell you, there is only one power, and it is entirely good. That power is God. So friends, there can be no power opposed to God. There can be nothing. There can't be God and something. There is only God. And so, it's the potential goodness. It's our perception of that potential goodness that has been blurred or obscured when we were talking about so-called evil. If you have allowed yourself to buy into the race belief that life is hard and that love is only for the lucky and the strong, then your cynicism will color the picture you see and the whole body of your life's experiences will reflect the negative perception. So let's just be clear. When Jesus referred to evil, he was talking about the concealment of good. When we come to realize this, we begin to understand that anyone who is unloving or unjust or even violent is actually a person who is fundamentally good, but either has never learned that truth about themselves, so doesn't know it, or has forgotten it somehow. In a very real sense, we can change that person at least as far as we are concerned by doing something very important. We must behold that person with the single eye that sees only the good and the true in other people. Silently salute the divinity in that person and watch him or her in their dealings with us. It will be different to their dealings with anyone else. And I must tell you that when we believe that person is truly divine and of God, they begin to change as well under the influence of our perception. Because what we see is really what we get. There's an amusing story that originated in the Far East and which I Jamaicanized. And I shared it here at the temple a few years ago. But like all good teaching stories, it bears repeating. It's about a young man who spied a beautiful girl walking along Bambo Avenue in the parish of St. Elizabeth here in Jamaica. This young man followed the young lady for about a mile, mesmerized by her undulating walk, which reminded him of the hills and valleys of his own home parish, Portland. In Jamaica, as we say, him jaw corner slack, you know, in your mouth is kind of. He followed her for about a mile. And finally, she turned and demanded, why are you following me? Why are you following me? He declared earnestly, because you is the prettiest woman I ever see in all of my born days. Lord, you're pretty. I have fallen at, in love at first sight with you. Marry me, do. Be mine. The girl replied, sure. You're not so pretty yet. You should see my sister. She is Miss Jamaica Material. Just, she's coming up the road just behind you. So our amorous young man spun around. And of course, beheld the plainest, 
girl that you could find anywhere in any parish of Jamaica. <laughs> what is this? You're mocking me, he exclaimed. You lied to me. <laughs> so did you, she replied. If you were so madly in love with me, why did you turn around? <laughs> Friends, this is what Jesus was talking about. We are all studying truth, and we declare that God is the only presence and the only power in our lives. But you know what? We turn around in fear that our finances won't hold out. We turn around in resistance to anyone whom we perceive to be a threat to our security or our position. We turn around in dread over every challenge that looms before us. And sometimes we turn around when we hear somebody over so, or just something that might be able to heal us. <laughs> if you're so in love with truth, keep your eyes single on what you say you believe. Let us remind ourselves that we are spiritual beings and that the world is essentially a spiritual world governed by spiritual law. Let us fall in love with this unchanging truth and establish our unity with it. When we recognize that this world is essentially good and that people are innately good, we will be seeing with the single eye of which the master teacher spoke. We will see goodness in all people and we'll draw forth goodness from them that perhaps even they were unaware that they possessed. So here is the great lesson to be gleaned from the master concerning keeping your eyes single. We can and must determine the level on which we are going to do business with or relate to our fellow man and woman. If we make contact with another, another person based on the appearances of how he or she seems to be functioning, then our relationship will be shaped by that level of consciousness. If you are grumbling that you just can't trust workers these days, or you are constantly muttering with your friends about why people have to act that way, stop and consider this. That was your experience of that person because that was the level of his or her character that you made contact with. You drew it out of him or her. You could just as easily, my friends, have drawn his or her highest and best self, their noble self, their divine self, but you would have had to precondition the relationship or the business transaction or the communication with them by seeing it with your inner sight, your eye sight. So this brings me to your assignment. Your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is this. Before you do any business this week, before every meeting, before every appointment, before every interaction, in fact, before you leave home in the mornings, simply affirm, I am established in spiritual unity with God and with all people. I am established in spiritual unity with God and with all people. Can we say that together? I am established in spiritual unity with God and with all people. I keep my eyes single and see the divinity in everyone. I keep my eyes single and see the divinity in everyone. Do this simple ex spiritual exercise this week and you will find yourself expressing more understanding, more tolerance, greater trust and deeper love for your fellow man. And the good news is your fellow man will correspondingly express himself at your level of consciousness. You know, I witnessed a very powerful demonstration of this a few years, quite a, a long, a few many years ago, when the society here in Jamaica was gripped with fear as stories circulated of a serial rapist who was operating in a residential area in Kingston. At the time, one of my friends, a single English girl, who should come from London originally, lived on her own in the area. Well, one evening, as it was getting dark, there was a knock at her gate. And she looked out through her open front door and saw a neatly dressed young man. 
So she went out to say, hi, how are you? Can I help you? And he gave her one of those spiels, you know, about needing money for one of those puff things that asthmatics use. His, his quite plausible story was that he did have money, but he had to choose between buying something to eat or buying the medication. She said, well, I don't have any money, but if you like, you can come in and I'll make you a sandwich and a cup of tea. You eat sardines, she said. He said, sure, thanks, and followed her into the flat. She left him in the living room and went to the kitchen to make the sandwich. And when she returned with the sandwich and a cup of tea, he was squatting before her bookcase, looking through her collection of metaphysical books. He expressed an interest in one. And delighted to find a young person interested in reading, she outlined what the book was all about and said, you can borrow it if you promise to return it. And when you do, we can discuss it if you like. Well, friends, this began a regular weekly visit and discussion over a sandwich and a cup of tea that lasted more than six months. Until one night, the police knocked on her gate. Again, she looked out through her open front door, saw it was the police, and went out to ask how she might help them. Are you Miss So-and-so? Yes. Yes, I am. And do you know a man named Roy? Roy So-and-so? Yes, I, I, I do. Is he in some kind of trouble? She asked. He has been arrested and has given your name as a contact. Well, friends, of course, she went to his aid. And long story short, yes, he was convicted as Baby Roy, the serial rapist. My friend remained a friend of this young man, visiting him in prison regularly until she returned home to England several years later. And at the time, I was really puzzled about how she had escaped being one of his targets. And when I went to, to discuss it with my, my teacher, my mentor, my friend, my spiritual mother, Reverend Elma Lumsden, she said, John Dare, your friend was relating to the divinity in him. And the divinity in him responded. Wow. And so you see, friends, our task is to keep our vision single-eyed to the truth that everyone is divine. Don't leave home without preparing yourself for the many human interactions you will have each day. You can turn the focused laser beam of your spiritual insight on the world, and this will ensure that nobody determines how you are going to either act or react. Set your intention to let your light shine and to think, speak, and act from the highest level of consciousness of which you are capable. The classes I co-facilitate with Reverend Michael Record at the Correctional Facility here in Kingston every week are a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for both of us as the teachers to keep our eyes single. And by the way, God bless those of you who responded to my appeal for contributions for the Ernest Holmes book, This Thing Called You, which we give to each participant. We write a dedication in the book to each person, and I wish you could see some of their faces when they receive them. For many, it's the first personalized gift they've ever received with their name in it. And I want you to know that neither the book nor the certificate that, of participation that we present to them at the end of the 12-week course mentions anything about where they are or where they're getting it. It doesn't mention anything about prison at all. One of the current cohort that we have in our, this class now, um, we're in our sixth week, um, it's very funny. He, he's on a short three-year sentence, he tells me. But he has a cellmate who is a lifer and who has already done 23 years. Now, this is how you're going to know life is really consciousness. The veteran told our participant not to bring any books into the cell because the books have bed bugs, what we call in Jamaica chink. He said to me, Reverend, if I was in here this la that length of time, I would have a PhD for sure. The only bug this fella has is the learning bug. And like many of the men in the program, he's keeping his eyes single on changing his thinking and through it, changing his life. 
The things you know that I really love about this teaching is its absolute practicality. This is not a, a, a religion, a philosophy, or a science that's theoretical. It teaches us how to live our lives in the everyday world out there. And so it helps us to learn how to create a world that works for everyone and that helps to awaken people, including ourselves, to our spiritual magnificence. It's an important job we're doing, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. And I think I should share with you, I think you'll be pleased to hear, that I've been invited to Philadelphia for the installation on November 13 of Reverend Dr. Maxine Kay, who is being installed as spiritual leader of the Greater Philadelphia Center for Spiritual Living. They fly me up on the 12th and back on the 14th, and Dr. Ken Gordon, spiritual leader, Center for Spiritual Living, will be the officiant, and I will be the keynote speaker at that gala event. So keep your eyes single for me, and your prayers multiple for the success of this quick trip. And they said, oh, but we want you to stay and talk on Sunday. And I said, no, I'm in my pulpit on Sunday the 15th, and my people expect me to be here. So up on the 12th and back on the 14th. I'd like to close by sharing an interesting story shared with me by Pansy Bisnot recently. And it's about a university lecturer who announced to his students one day that he would be giving them a surprise test. He handed out the papers face down as usual, and when everyone had received theirs, he instructed them to turn over, not them, the paper, and begin. <laughs> to the student's surprise, there was no question on the paper. There was only a single dot, a black dot, in the center of the page. The instruction was that they should write about what they saw for 20 minutes. At the end of the allotted time, he collected the papers and read them aloud to the class. And do you know, to a person, every one of them had written as much as they possibly could about the tiny black dot in the center of the page. I want you to just think about that. Here is a, a sheet of white paper. And he said he wasn't grading them. He was just using this as an exercise in what they give their attention to. The vast expanse of white paper could represent the infinite potential available to all of them. Here they could have written their dreams, their vision for the future, their hopes, their aspirations, and their plans. But instead, they chose to focus on the tiny black dot. Isn't that like so many of us? We keep our eyes single on the tiny blemishes on this vast potential of our lives. And then we say, why, things tough. <laughs> Let us once more affirm, I am established in spiritual unity with God together. I am established in spiritual unity with God and with all people. I keep my eyes single and see the, divi the divinity in everyone. I keep my eyes single and see the divinity in everyone. To your neighbor say, I behold the divinity in you. Namaste. I behold the divinity in you. Namaste. I Friends, I am keeping my eyes single and I am beholding the divinity with great love and tenderness and appreciation in each one of you. Namaste. Thank <laughs> you.